Snipers, you have to see what's happening to the Bitcoin price this Friday as shortly after my video was posted yesterday and we talked about the best case scenario of Bitcoin testing the weekly open at forty three thousand eight hundred before seeing another push to the upside. That's exactly what happened with Bitcoin right now, testing a very critical resistance level, which is why I had to get this update to you guys, snipers, and realize we also have this forty nine thousand seven hundred dollar level as a potential target for Bitcoin right now. The question is, we're heading into the weekend where the cryptocurrency market is the most manipulated. And after seeing such an exuberant move over the last twenty four hours, is it time to potentially start looking at levels of retracement or a potential push to the downside as a corrective scenario that could still put Bitcoin in a bullish trend, but potentially see some short term downside? I want to talk about this scenario because if we prepare for this now and things actually take a turn for the worst, and we see Bitcoin break forty four thousand eight hundred, then preparing for this and hedging our positions now would be the best case scenario. So I'm going to talk about something a little bit different on this channel today, and that's going to be for those that entered long positions in Ethereum and Bitcoin during this consolidation where we tested thirty thousand and for those that got positions at thirty one thousand. 132,000, potentially even in the twenty nine thousand or twenty eight thousand dollar level. How could you properly hedge your current position with Bitcoin seeing such exuberant price action over the last few weeks without selling your assets? And that's how you use shorts in the markets. So I'm going to talk about how to hedge our spot positions that are long with leveraged short positions that would allow us to potentially hedge our risk if we see a corrective rally, because I think it's appropriate at this point to talk about what a retracement would look like from this exuberant move to the upside that we've seen over the last few weeks. So I don't know how you guys are going to react to this type of video. Of course, I would never sell my long term positions in this market. And for the swing trades that we entered into Ethereum, for example, at 1760, I don't want to be selling these positions on spot right now because, you know, for me personally, I'm earning interest on my Ethereum. I have some locked in cold storage. And so without selling our Ethereum, what would be the best way to take advantage of this move? And let me just throw some random scenario out. What if we took a short position around this, you know, known resistance level for Ethereum? You can see all of these areas of confluence. We know there's resistance. We can expect some people to want to sell their spot positions in Ethereum, which is probably the stupidest thing that you could do. But as an investor, would it be wise to potentially take a short position position to hedge our long position here. And of course, we can always set a barrier of a stop loss for that short position. And we don't have to risk as much of our spot capital in this position because we can utilize the leverage that this market allows us to amplify a small amount of capital to hedge our spot position so we don't have to sell our spot position. And if we see any downside here, it could be, you know, after seeing maybe one more push to the upside, who knows? But if we start to see a push to the downside, would it be wise to have a short position open? And then you close that short position here. If we come and test the 100 day moving average, for example, 2600. Now, guess what? We took advantage of this rally without selling our entries. We keep our capital gains to maintain long term capital gains versus short term. And so things like that, I want to talk about, you know, that type of stuff today. So I don't know how you guys are going to react to this. You know, once again, I am not short this market at the end of the day. What I'm describing to you is a way to stay in your long term positions to stay 
stay in your spot positions. Look at this little uh, emoji I have here. Because we know in the long term we're bullish, but in the short term as traders, would it be wise to be taking short positions to hedge our long positions to maintain the profits? I want to talk about that today. So we're going to do technical analysis as we always do. We'll talk about Ethereum and the Bitcoin chart because this is a leading indicator for altcoins. We stay above 65,000 Satoshis. We are still in a very bullish trend. You snipers know that. And then, of course, we'll also cover the revolving parts of the cryptocurrency market, like the total market cap, others dominance and Bitcoin dominance. And then quickly take a look at traditional markets as they are affecting the cryptocurrency market. I'll tell you that right now with the DXY pushing down. That's why we're seeing crypto go up now. ADA USDT. I made a video three days ago. I don't make a video on this channel all the time about Cardano. I said, we're going to see this breakout. And guess what? We are at two dollars and ten cents now. So this was an amazing find that we had. And, you know, if you guys look at our YouTube videos, just look at the hashtags I've had on my videos here for the last year. Bitcoin, Ethereum and Cardano. Those are the three coins that I have my largest positions in when it comes to long term spot positions. And those are the three coins I've maintained to cover on this channel. And this is exactly why, because they're fundamentally sound. And so first, let's talk about what's happening here to Bitcoin. The reason I'd like to start addressing a potential retracement is because this is one of my favorite Fibonacci tools, because not only does it give us Fibonacci levels, but it also factors in time and time is just as important as price action. And so if we take the high of sixty four thousand and the yearly low of twenty eight thousand, notice how we are in this blue zone, which means we are overextended on this rally. So we entered spot positions down at these levels at thirty one thousand for Bitcoin. We saw the run up. Would it be wise to take short positions here? to hedge our long positions. Now, let's say we break forty nine thousand seven hundred. We can close our short positions. Guess what? We don't have to use as much capital if we enter short positions here because we can use leverage now and the real amount of capital stays in our spot position and we take a small piece of that and we put it into a short. If we see a retracement, we have the point five here, the 50 percent retracement for the Fibonacci. What if we come to test thirty four thousand seven hundred and eighty eight? I'd love to have a short at forty seven thousand if that happens. Right. So that's just what I'm saying here. It looks overextended based on this Fibonacci. And with the time, this blue zone is really the most extended. This could really go if we're not going to just see new all time highs. Now we break forty nine thousand seven hundred. I think we're going to see new all time highs for Bitcoin. That's what I'd like to just print on this video today. If we break forty nine thousand seven hundred, we're probably going to see new all time highs because that means we are just smashing through and gonna, means we're going to be starting a new impulse here. And now this whole Fibonacci retracement doesn't matter. Right. So that's what I'm watching here for Bitcoin. And it's very interesting because if we put this rainbow over Ethereum, notice I will take the high here and we'll put it to the yearly lows here. So we saw a high on the 12th of May at four thousand three hundred and around eighty one bucks. And then we saw this low here. We can just kind of take this low that we saw on the 22nd of June at one thousand six hundred and ninety four dollars. And notice how we are already overextended above this blue area here. Now, I am curious to see here if we were to move this and look at this low here where the impulse actually started, would we still be overextended? Well, look at that. See, this puts us in this blue range, just like where Bitcoin's at right now. Ethereum is a more vol volatile asset. Now, the only concern I have here is what is this candle low? Seventeen hundred forty eight. What's this candle low? Seventeen oh six. So we're kind of being a little bit like Bruce Lee here, like water. We're not using the, the actual yearly low here. Um, so that is just some food for thought on the table. But 
you know, because Ethereum is a more volatile asset, what if we factored this in as the low, we would be overextended. Now, it looks like if we break 3454, we're breaking all of this resistance. That's when I would be closing any short positions, because at that point, I think that's where the moon comes in. So, uh, you know, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, how would this look two months from now if you knew to yourself, OK, I bought a ton of Ethereum on spot at 1760. And then when we reached 3300, I hedged my spot position using let's say one tenth of the capital of the spot position, because now I can use leverage to take a short here. And if Ethereum in two months is at two thousand dollars again, are you going to be happy that you had a short position here at thirty three hundred with a liquidation price of maybe, you know, thirty seven hundred above these two major resistance levels? So, the, the, you know, the likelihood of us just coming here before seeing this move down becomes a lot less likely. I don't know. I'm just saying. You know, do you want to be sitting here at, you know, uh, with Ethereum at twenty three hundred dollars holding a spot position that you entered at seventeen sixty and holding a short position that you entered in at thirty three hundred just in case? You know, what if black swan event happens and then you have that position there um, or let's say we just rally to the upside. Guess what? You still have your spot position that you bought down at seventeen sixty. So you know, and, and and let's say we rally up from here. Well, guess what? If that happens, you still have your spot position from 1760. You you might lose, you know, a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars or whatever is a couple hundred thousand depends on how big you're trading. And, 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 and you've already made, you know, nine times that and we still continue further and you still have your spot position. So I'm just trying to, you know, show you guys what trading markets, uh, you know, when it comes to doing this for a living looks like. And, and so that's what I'm watching here. Uh, and then just to kind of wrap up this video, if Ethereum to Bitcoin stays above 65,000 Satoshis, I'm expecting strength for all altcoins. So we're clearly seeing Cardano here showing strength, moving to the upside and then Bitcoin dominance still below the 20 week moving average showing weakness with others dominance showing more strength, but nothing, you know, to go home and tell grandma about yeah, We're not seeing a major breakout here. Um, we're still, you know, tightening up. Uh, first, we tightened up between the 50 day and 100 day. Now we're tightening up between the 200 day and the uh, 100 day moving average. And so you're just sitting at 12.78% dominance, not much to talk about there. I do want to talk about traditional markets, DXY pulling back, allowing the crypto market to see this push to the upside. This was the preferred scenario coming into the weekend. I think that's a good thing. The S&P 500 moving up. That's very good for the cryptocurrency market. And then commodities are starting to cool off from the move to the downside. Uh, gold actually seeing you know, this push to the upside. So I think this is all good stuff. Nothing um, abnormal in the traditional markets, but I don't know how you guys are going to react to today's video. I mean, once again, uh, I'm showing you guys a way to hold your long term positions in this market while also making money on these moves to the upside and downside and, and to show you guys how to hedge positions. You know, that's, that's what the, the best money market managers in, in this world do. They hedge their positions. Right. So with that, thank you all for tuning into the channel today. Can't wait to hear the feedback from this video on the comments. If you want to win principles by Ray Dalio, comment below and share this video. You have a chance to win. Bronson Conrado says Cardano will be transformative. Keep this content coming. Thank you so much for the kind words, brother. Send me a message on Instagram. The link is in the description below. And with that, I appreciate each and every one of you snipers tuned into the channel. Good stuff to see this move to the upside and the best case scenario that we talked about coming into fruition just after I posted my video. And with that, I'll see you guys into the weekend where the markets are the most manipulated. So it's going to be an exciting Saturday and Sunday until next time. Snipers.